Hi, welcome to the Cornish Music blog on how to buy a guitar in store. Now we covered how to buy it online earlier on uh, in the previous blog. Now we're going to do it in store. Um, we're going to take it more from a perspective of you're actually going to buy your first guitar. A lot of people nowadays get bought a guitar for birthday or Christmas. Um, so we're going to take it as a, you're actually going in store for the first time, maybe on your own or with someone who might know what they're talking about. Um, now I've got plenty of experience of buying guitars for 20 years, so hopefully I'm going to be able to pass some of that on to you. Um, the rig I'm using is a Fender Strat 98 Mexican, just straight up leading to a 9.6 Spider 4 combo with no effects on it, straight clean, everything. And that's exactly what you should do. Um, the number one way to test a guitar is actually to test its clean sound. If you go in and put loads of distortion on, loads of reverb or loads of chorus or you know, even wah or something, like that, then you're not actually going to hear how good your guitar is, especially if you're buying um, at the cheaper end of the scale. You really need to play it clean to see what your guitar can do um, on its own, because um, these are amazing bits of kit if you get it right. Um, so, the number one test that I always do when I get a guitar is number one, get it in tune. They should tune it for you in the store. Um, if you don't know how to tune it, then um, get them to do it and the first thing you do is just play uh, an open E chord or a G or some, something low down just so that you can hear whether it, that sustain. What I'm looking for there is for it to ring on and on and on until the note, the volume fails. I'm just going to turn it up a little bit. So there we get so it's still ringing on still ringing on now and still going that that's very good because that means that it will naturally be able to keep the note going so you won't have to rely on things like massive amounts of distortion um, if you if you want to play for a cleaner tone so if you're just going to by all means go and do that but you'll probably end up getting a guitar that you regret getting. Um, so nice first step, open chord, just hear it go on. If you hear any uh, metallic ringing then it means the action needs doing. So you will even need to get the store to redo the action for you because it probably means the strings are too low or it's sat in the store for a long time and um, the action's just gone of its own accord. So which can do it can do if it gets hot and cold um, so most guitar stores are quite busy places nowadays so they get hot in the day and then freezing at night unless of course they um, really do look after their guitars um, so you're looking for a nice open ring of a sound and then what I was also doing there is just testing the volume knob so I'm just turning that up and down you can still hear that note ringing on. And what you can get sometimes on the tones, especially on Fenders, you do sometimes get it on some of the other makes as well, especially cheaper make guitars. Um, you get a, a crackle. Um, I don't actually have any guitars that are currently doing this at the moment, unless I've demonstrated it, but um, basically when you turn the volume on, up and down you would hear it like an um, electrical crackle going on that um, basically means that the pot is getting old and you, you might need to replace it soon so we tested the volume knob we tested that the actions okay um, we're just going to do the pickup selector so this is on the bridge pickup at the moment one up so it should be bridge and middle that sort of a southern twangy sound coming in right there um, which this guitar is brilliant for so that's working so just the middle Yeah. 
next one, so middle and neck. <laughs> going to do the tone so obviously we're on the bridge pickup so I just usually turn it to number one or ten or whatever is on the opposite of what you've got it set on currently you don't get much of a change on the bridge pickup on a strat so let's um, let's take it to the middle That'd be a good test. So I'm going with no tone. There we go. So very cloudy. Adjust it back, everyone. Trebly. Uh, and we'll do it the same with the other one. So we'll adjust the, the top tone. So put it on the neck. And then full bass. tone, fuzzy tone. Um, so we've tested all the electrics on this guitar. Um, the other thing to do is obviously make sure you haven't got any cosmetic damage, uh, looking at paint chips, buckle rash on the back, so uh, strats have got the plate right in the middle. Some other guitars you'll get marks on here if they're second hand, where they've been played with a guy who's wearing jeans like myself, and uh, you'll get a buckle rash on, on the back. See, that way you can tell <clears throat> signs like how old a guitar is, how well used it is. If you've got a lot of wear on the back, then it's obviously an older, probably heavily kicked guitar. The neck. Um, look for any signs of cracking. Um, also, if you've got things like, uh, if you're buying a cheaper made guitar, uh, or if it's Chinese made, um, they tend to do a lot of scarf joints, so look for there. On the back of this guitar there is absolutely no way it's a scarf joint because it's a Fender Mexican. Um, but yeah, so it's all nice and neat on there. And just check the state of the head machine heads. So um, if you don't, you can, once you finish playing it and you're happy and you feel good with the guitar, that is the number one thing. Don't buy a guitar unless it feels good because if it doesn't feel good, then it's not going to feel good in five years' time when you've still got it. Um, you can turn the machine heads, make sure they're all turning and they're not sort of locked by um, age and dirt and because there's bits that you can get things inside here and it will uh, foul the mechanism up so just turn them, make sure they're all working. Um, you can usually ask them to restring it for you if you're in a really good guitar store, uh, if not buy a set of uh, something like Diodario strings because um, they're, they're expensive but um, it's usually good to have a good set of strings on a new guitar. If you're just learning, however, you can go from any make of strings you want. So you can do Ernie Balls, Diodarios, all of them. They're all good. Um, they all have their upsides and downsides. Personally, I hit the, I hit the strings quite hard. So I like the Diodarios because they seem to be a bit more durable. They're thicker as well on a lot of cases. So. Uh, Ernie Ball Slinkies are very good strings though um, and practically all of my guitar mates use them as well so um, yeah just it's whatever makes you happy is the right guitar um, I've been into a store before and I've picked out a guitar and all of the other guitarists I had with me which was about three or four of them all said oh no I don't like that but I picked it up and I, and I love it and um, yeah it currently sits behind me at the moment so um, yeah it's a, it's a really good, it was a good buy as well, it's one of my main guitars. So the most important things when you're buying a gu guitar in, in store is check for sustain, check that the note rings out, um, make sure that you, you can't get any metal, metallic ringing out of the fretboard, because um, if you do then it needs the action doing, get them to do it in store. Um, and then check all the electrics. Um, but the most important part is 
if you feel happy and feel comfortable playing the guitar, then it's the right one. Um, don't spend five minutes in the store and go, yep, yeah, that's the right one for me, I want that. Um, because that's not how it works. Um, usually, if I'm buying guitars, I will go and try about 20 of them out. Different makes, different styles, depending on what I need. Now, if I need a basic guitar, I'm probably not going to buy a Fender Strat. I'm probably going to buy something like a Les Paul. Um, use the Epiphones, are pretty good nowadays. Um, some of them better than the actual Gibson ones. So just have a think about what sort of tone you actually want. If you're, if you're going out to be a metal shredder, then you, you're going to want the Jacksons and Schecters and things like that because that's what they're kind of designed for. Although, to be fair, I have a Schecter 7 string that I use to play rock and roll So because um, it can split the pickups. So they are great guitars. I know we're going to review that coming up soon. If I'm going for a more rock and roll country sound, I'll probably pick up a Strat. Um, and then obviously anything that's a little bit more sort of jazzier and funky, you're going to look at sort of semi-hollow bodies and things like that. So um, it is purely down to whatever you feel comfortable playing. It helps if you can go along with someone who's already been playing a few years as well, who knows what they're doing. Um, so try and try and go along with a friend who plays if you've got one, or seek advice if you've got a guitar teacher because he would help you out as well. Look, point you in the right direction. He obviously knows you're playing, so he will know how what sort of guitar you need. Um, failing that, if you have any questions. Um, in anything or any um, sort of horror stories or anything you want to share with me, uh, email me uh, via the website and the website is collismusic.com. Please come along, um, email me through to contact us and, uh, and I'll, I will be back in touch or leave a comment under this uh, YouTube video and I'll get back to you. Um, if you have any, any questions about guitars, please just contact me, I love talking about guitars and I will do what I can to help you. Um, so thanks for watching the video and uh, see you next time. <laughs>